Hey everyone, I'm Alan Thrall, and I finally got to make this video. It's been a long time coming. If you look back on my YouTube channel a few years ago, even as far back as 10 years ago, you'll see videos of me bulked up to a hefty 255 pounds. I typically floated between 240 to 250 pounds body weight, but 255 pounds was pinnacle bulk. It was my PR body weight. And I was not shy about my bulk. Bulking for me was a personality trait. It was as big of a part of me as training was. I went from 165 pounds body weight out of boot camp to 255 pounds in about two years. That's 90 pounds on a six foot tall frame, a, a very active six foot tall frame. 90 pounds in about two years. And I loved it. I loved bulking. Bulking for me was as powerful and as potent as steroids. I'm not saying that to be funny. I honestly convinced myself that instead of doing steroids, I could just use food to gain a bunch of body weight and a bunch of strength. And I think I was right. My progress when I was bulking was insane, how quickly I was making progress. The correlation between body weight gain and strength increase was undeniable. I remember I was doing five through one. That was the first real structured program I did in like 2010. And on that program, you go from fives one week to the threes to the five, three, one. Percentages increase each week, so the weight gets heavier, but my reps were getting heavier along with it. So I was adding weight to the bar and I was doing more reps each week. Like the program couldn't even keep up with the amount of progression I was making. When I did the Texas method, I squat, on that program, I squatted 405 for the first time. So I was a four plate virgin. I put 405 on my back for the first time. I squatted it for five reps. Easy, could have done more reps. There was a time when I decided for a week I was gonna take some heavy singles on all my lifts, which is something I never did. And at the time, my squat, my best squat ever was 455 pounds for three reps. So I was taking a heavy squat single. I went in that day and I squatted 455, easy. And then I squatted 475. And I said, this will be a pretty sweet 20 pound PR. I squatted 475. I stood up with 475 faster than I went down with it. And I was happy with the 20 pound PR. My, my training partner, the guy who I was training with at the time, he says, he just wouldn't let me stop there. He said, there's no way you're gonna stop it at that weight. So we loaded up 500 and I did that. Went into the gym, not even planning on squatting 500 and I squatted 500 for the first time uh, doing that. Uh, what a 45 pound PR that I wasn't even expecting. My progress was crazy. I'm saying all this because I kind of like reminiscing about all this, um, but I took every meal as seriously as I took every training session. I don't care if I was in the middle of the apocalypse, I was not gonna miss a training session and I was not gonna miss a meal. And nowadays, I don't take that same approach to bulking. I am in fact trying to bulk right now, trying to build some muscle, but I don't take that same approach to bulking for a few reasons that are probably obvious, but some that might not be so obvious. Uh, the first one, I don't need to gain 40 pounds of body weight. I don't need to be 40 pounds heavier than I am right now. I'm six feet tall, I weigh about 205 pounds. I don't need to walk around at 245, 250 pounds body weight. Maybe if I was 135 pounds soaking wet with rocks in my pockets, I'd be like, yeah, dude, you probably need to put on like 40 pounds of body weight, but I just don't need to. Uh, the next reason that I don't take that same approach to bulking is it's not sustainable. I knew deep within my belly, deep within my full belly, that I was not gonna be eating seven to 10,000 calories every single day for the rest of my life. And so when I realized it's probably time to stop this, I did, I made the pivot, I didn't fight it, I just said I'm not gonna eat like this anymore. And another reason is it's not healthy. I don't really need to expand on that. It is uncomfortable, any of you who have been in aggressive bulk know that it's very uncomfortable to stuff your face every single day, every single meal, all day, every day. Uh, and it can be, at the side note, it can be pretty stressful. If you're out and trying to do something with your life and you gotta like always worry about eating, it's, uh, it's uncomfortable and it's stressful. And I think the last reason, one of the last reasons I don't follow that same approach to bulking is it's selfish. At that time, all I cared about in my life was training. So it fit my lifestyle, fit my routine, it was fine. I didn't have, to, I didn't have any obligations other than lifting weights and eating. Even when I opened the gym, I was busy opening the gym, but once it was up and running, I didn't have a lot to do. I didn't have members, I didn't have membership. I was just kind of figuring out how am I gonna make this work? 
it wasn't a very busy job. And so I was able to just eat all day. Now I'm a father, I'm a husband, I'm a gym owner of a busier gym than it was 10 years ago. And I work with clients. I gotta kind of be light on my feet and be flexible and be able to move around all day. I can't be stuffing my face for 45 minutes every few hours. I can't waddle around the gym stuffed to the gills, you know, walking around like a hippo with bad gas all day. I've gotta be light on my feet, a little more agile. I can't carry around all that body weight and eat that much just because I'm, you know, in the name of bulking. I think that if I took a more responsible, practical, and more conservative approach to my bulk 13 years ago now, I've been bulking, I guess, I've, uh, well, I started bulking 13 years ago. And I think that I could be where I am today, uh, even if I was more conservative. So let's look at the numbers. I was 165 pounds when I got out of boot camp. That's when I said, I wanna start lifting weights, I wanna get big and strong. And right now I'm 205 pounds. So that's that was 13 years ago. So 13 years, I've gained 40 pounds of body weight. I'm probably at the same body fat percentage. So let's just pretend that it's been all lean body mass. 40 pounds in 13 years is like three pounds of lean body mass a year, which is reasonable. That's, uh, you can expect that. Uh, I didn't need to necessarily put on 90 pounds of body weight. Now, uh, with all that, I'm not saying that I regret what I did. I'm not saying that I would have done it differently, period. I just won't even expand on that any further. Uh, but you might not be in the same situation that I was in. So maybe you're getting into strength training for the first time now and you're hearing about this, you know, the infamous bulk, or this is the trajectory you have to take, you have to go on this huge bulk in order to get strong. If maybe you're getting into powerlifting and you just gotta eat big, get big, that kind of thing. Realize that when I did that, I was in my early 20s. You can do a lot of stupid stuff in your early 20s and get away with it. If you're 41 years old and you think, mm, I, should, I should put on 30 pounds of body weight in the next year, I would say no, that's probably a bad idea. I didn't have any pre-existing health conditions in my early 20s. Um, maybe you have high blood pressure. Maybe your waistline is already a little bit too big. You've, your cholesterol, blood glucose, whatever, all these metrics. If you do an aggressive bulk, you are only gonna amplify your, your problems. Um, so keep that in mind. Another thing to consider is that I have been skinny my whole life. So when I gained a bunch of weight, even though I held that weight for a, quite a while, for several years, once I decided that I wanted to get rid of this weight, it was pretty easy for me. It came off, it shed it off pretty, pretty quickly. If you have been overweight or maybe chubby your whole life, uh, maybe not overweight, but you've just been chubby your whole life, you've held onto a lot of fat cells, those stubborn fat cells on your belly or something, and you wanna go on this big bulk and you just say, I'll just cut later, uh, it might not be as easy. It might not come off as easily as it did for me. It's something that I've seen uh, that's, I mean, more aesthetic is some people come off the bulk and they've got some loose skin, depending on how long they held that bulk for, or stretch marks. Thankfully, I didn't have to deal with any of that. So this is all stuff to consider that maybe you don't need to do this huge 40 pound in a couple years, you know, massive bulk. So uh, with that said, like I already mentioned, I am trying to bulk, I am trying to still gain some muscle, but I'm just not following these three principles that I used to follow. I'll explain here now. So the first one, this is what I got my props here for. I don't know how well you're gonna be able to see this. I'll probably just zoom in uh, afterwards and edit this video. So if someone was to say, I'd like a glass of water, I'd like a full glass of water, please. I don't think the camera's gonna catch this. This is a full glass of water. Looks great, thank you, sir. This is what I would call maintenance, my maintenance calories. If I just have a full glass every day, I'm gonna stay the same. This is how I think of the bulk. That's it. Just a tiny bit more to fill up that glass. So it is truly full, I can't fit any more in here. This is the bulk, it's just that little extra. And that's how I'm approaching the bulk now. The way I used to approach the bulk was Let's uh, get this back down here. Full glass, there's my maintenance. Bulk. All of this spillover, all of this 
extra. This was how I, I viewed the bulk. Just put as much as you can in there and you're bound to bulk. This is kind of what I think of as the shotgun effect. If I was trying to hit a target and I just took, you know, 20 shots, chances are I'm gonna hit the target. The high chance that I'm gonna hit the target. But there's gonna be a lot of collateral damage involved with me trying to hit the target. What I could do instead is just take my time, focus on the target, maybe learn how to shoot, take one or two shots, hit the target and not have all this collateral damage, not have all of this, this spillover, if you will. When this glass was completely full without all this spillover, I just imagine that I am trying to facilitate an environment that allows me to fuel my training sessions and to aid in recovery from those training sessions. So I think of the training sessions and the time in the gym is what builds muscle. My diet just allows that to happen. We often say things, you've probably heard this, when I say we, I include myself because I've said this before too, lifting weights doesn't build muscle. Eating and recovering from lifting weights is what builds muscle. I get it, I understand this, I, I understand the sentiment behind it, but it's sort of bad advice. If you look all around you, there are plenty of people who eat enough calories, but they don't have any muscle or they don't have a lot of muscle because they don't have a lifting routine or their lifting routine is severely lacking or they don't have the consistency to stick to a lifting routine. So I don't think me telling a bunch of Americans that we need to eat more food, that's why we're not getting big and strong, is great advice. I think of letting my training sessions build muscle and I use my diet to fuel my sessions and aid in recovery, not the other way around. And the second principle that I no longer am fully bought in on would be protein requirements. I used to be under the belief that you need a gram of protein per pound of body weight in order to build muscle. If you weigh 200 pounds, you should be eating 200 grams of protein. And I actually made a video of my diet sometime last year, maybe a little over a year ago, and at the end of it, I, I uh, crunched all the numbers and I was at 120 grams of protein for the day. And I said on the video, yeah, you know, I, I feel like that's a little bit low. I should probably bump that up. I don't track my calories. I don't track any of my macronutrients. I just typically eat the same thing every day. So it was a surprise to me when I actually filmed the video and jotted down those numbers. And I said 120 grams of protein, a little bit low. And I did bump it up for the follow-up video and I stuck with it for a little bit, but eventually I just came to the realization that I don't need to stress about getting more than 120 grams of protein for me, for me personally. I think that what happens with a lot of people is they tend to, at the end of the day, if they're down on protein, they eat more food in order to make up for that protein requirement and they end up just overeating their calories. You're probably fine just calling it a day, not stressing about getting a crazy amount of protein in your diet. And this also came to me as a kind of a realization when just talking to people in real life. This is not an exact example or an exact scenario, but something very similar to it. When I was talking to someone at the gym and they, they're like, hey, I'm uh, looking to build some muscle. Here's my weight training program. I take a look at it and it looks good. I'm like, oh, great program. What does your diet look like? And if they were to say to me, okay, I eat uh, Greek yogurt every morning with some granola and some fruit for breakfast. And then for lunch, I have a, a turkey sandwich and an apple and some chips. And then for dinner, I have a piece of salmon, rice, and vegetables. That diet is perfectly fine for someone wanting to build muscle. You can certainly build muscle on that diet. I would never look at that diet and say, nope, that's not enough. If you think about it, that diet could be like 60 to 70 grams of protein, maybe. Like uh, the, the, the Greek yogurt's what, 20 grams of protein for a bowl, just depending on how big your serving sizes are here. 20 grams of protein for your turkey sandwich and 20 grams of protein in your piece of salmon. On the low end, that's 60 grams of protein for a day. Do you think it would make sense for me to tell this person, nope, uh, you should triple that. You should be getting 180 grams of protein. Eat three times as much. That's just ridiculous. People don't have the time or the money for that kind of stuff. So you don't need as much protein as you think. Also, with that example diet that I just gave, those are high quality protein sources. So that protein, you know, if they're getting 100 grams of good quality protein, they're fine. Sure, if someone was overweight and they're eating like four or 5,000 calories a day of just pure junk food, 
they're going to get some protein in there because there's protein in almost everything. And if I was to look at that diet and say, you're getting like 5,000 calories a day and you've got 60 grams of protein. Your protein is so low and your calories are so high, that needs to be fixed. So, and they're probably getting their protein from really crappy protein sources. So if you're getting protein from good quality sources, I don't think that you need you know, a pound, a gram of protein per pound of body weight. If we were to take someone's protein intake from 20 grams to 100 grams per day, they're probably gonna notice some difference. But stressing about getting your protein intake from 100 to 140 or 120 to 160 is not doing anything for you. It could be easy just to take another scoop or two of whey protein, which is totally fine, and I'm not discouraging you from eating more protein. Some people like to eat that way. They like very animal-based, protein-rich diets, and they eat a ton of protein. That's totally fine, I'm not telling you not to. I just, me personally, I don't eat as much protein, I don't stress about as much protein as I used to. Here, here's a very quick example. When I was eating that 10,000 calories a day, I would drink protein shakes. Like I'm eating 10,000 calories a day. I really, do I really think that I need to supplement it with more protein powder? It's just, no, I'm, I'm cool. I don't need to do all that. And the last principle that I no longer follow, this one was kind of, I knew I was gonna include this, but I didn't really know how to word it. But uh, I don't focus so much on calorie dense foods anymore. I used to say, if you wanna gain weight, you need calorie dense foods. Sure, that could help you gain weight, but I, personally, I don't follow that anymore. The reason is, a lot of the calorie dense foods I was eating also had a ton of saturated fat, butter, eggs, whole milk, beef, fatty beef, ice cream, dairy, cheese, all this stuff has a lot of saturated fat. And I'm not saying saturated fat is bad. However, I used to not even think twice about saturated fat. You tell me, hey Alan, you're eating like 200 grams of saturated fat a day. I don't care. What? Well, how many calories am I getting? How much protein am I getting? Never cared once about how much saturated fat I was eating. And I've realized that, well, that's probably not the best way to go about things. So due to some, some recent events, everyone's okay for the most part, but uh, within my family, I have noticed mom, dad, aunts, uncles, my four grandparents uh, who are all dead. My four grandparents are dead. They died in like their 60s and early 70s, quite a while ago. But looking at my family tree, there are a lot of heart problems, high blood pressure, high, high cholesterol, and I don't really have a problem with obesity for the most part in my family. So they're all of somewhat normal body weight, but they have those issues. And I just kind of am starting to think, you know, my dad went through a couple things earlier this year. He's doing much better. I'm just thinking, is this, is this the route that I'm taking? Is this where I'm heading? Um, and I don't want it to be. So I realized I should probably cut down on saturated fat in my diet. So while I still do eat all those things I just mentioned, I still eat butter, eggs, dairy, whole milk, beef. I just eat far less. So I am gonna make a diet video showing you kind of all this stuff I'm talking about, what it looks like in, uh, in real time, what my diet looks like now. So you can see, I do still eat those things. I just limit them. I severely limit them. I think that I fell into believing a lot of the stuff on social media, even if it wasn't intentional. I was just kind of believing all the hype behind saturated fat nowadays. People say, saturated fat will increase testosterone, it helps with hormones, it helps with sleep, it helps you build muscle, it lubricates your joints, it's good for your skin, it's good for your hair, it's all this and that. And it might be, I'm not saying it's not, saturated fat is good for you and you do need it, but not in excess. You know, saturated fat's good for you. Okay, let me put a tablespoon of butter in my coffee every morning. Let me cook everything in butter. Let me get the fattiest pizza, pieces of beef and just eat the huge chunks. And I used to do that. I used to drink whole milk, a lot of it every day, non-homogenized, so just had the cream at the top. I would eat the cream. Huge chunks of fat in the milk, I'd just gulp it down. Everything I cooked would be in a pan and butter. Uh, if I did eat steak, it'd be fatty steak, and I wouldn't discard the fat, a big old chunk of fat, I'd eat that. So I just do that far less nowadays. And I think that, I'm kind of all over the place here, but hopefully you're still following me. Everyone has a different response to a certain diet. Everyone needs a little bit different diet. And so it is important to figure out 
what works for you. Let me explain this in a way that might make more sense to you. If I had two individuals who were the same body weight, same age, same training experience, zero, they've never trained before, same strength levels, same starting base levels, and you put them on the same exact program, in one year, two years, five years down the road, they're gonna have different results because they respond differently. Some people respond better to this type of training or that type of training. Some people are highly responsive to physical training, some people are not. I think that diet is the same way. If you took those two same individuals and you were to give them a diet, they might be a little bit different in one year, two year, five years, 10 years. And so I think that for me, just based off of my family tree, maybe I shouldn't be eating so much saturated fat. And so that was the reason for me to cut back on saturated fat. Also, before I end this video, there is another thing that I discovered when I lowered my saturated fat in my diet. So earlier this year, I was having a problem with heartburn, it's kind of acid reflux, and it was getting uncomfortable, obviously, but it was becoming a chronic issue. And I had heartburn for a couple of days. I'm thinking, man, what is this from? What did I eat? Maybe it was something I ate this weekend. It'll be gone in a couple of days. Didn't go away, just hung around, kept, being there. It was annoying. So, so bothersome. I'd be working with clients and I'm just like distracted by this heartburn. I started taking Tums. I'm like, what am I eating that's causing this? I don't, I don't know. This kind of came out of nowhere. And so, uh, I said, Oh, you know what? It's coffee. That's what it is. Coffee. Yeah. Coffee's acidic. I don't even drink very much coffee. I drink, I, there are more days during the week. I don't drink coffee than I do. And, uh, so I said, I'll stop drinking coffee for a while. Stop drinking coffee for a week. Nothing happened. Nothing changed. All right, what else is it? Um, oh, you know what? It's, uh, it's all the red sauce, the red pasta sauce I eat. Stopped eating that, didn't change. You know what? It might be the onions and the bell peppers. I do a lot of cooking and everything to get onions and bell peppers. Stopped doing that for a while, nothing changed. I'm like, God dang, what is it? Oh, you know what? Uh, maybe it's the lemon water. I drink lemon water every morning. Maybe it's just the acidic lemon on my empty stomach every morning. That's what's causing the heartburn. Stopped doing that, nope, nothing changed. Unrelated, what I had just talked about with my family, I had said, you know what? I think I need to stop eating so much butter, so many dang eggs, so much beef, so much whole milk. And so I said, I'm gonna start this on Monday. And so I started eating a lower fat diet. By Tuesday, I didn't even think about it, but I'm like, the heartburn's not there. Sweet. Week goes by, no heartburn. A couple weeks go by, no heartburn. And it took a couple of weeks for me to realize I think I was getting heartburn because I was eating so much saturated fat in my diet. And so by dropping that, I no longer have heartburn. And so this was just like, all right, this is new year, new me, whatever. Uh, this is what I'm gonna stick with. And so anyways, this video is extremely long. My thoughts were kind of all over the place. Those are the three principles that I no longer follow when I'm bulking. I'm not saying you need to do the same thing. I'm just explaining to you how, how my brain works. And this is a kind of a preface for the meal video, full day of eating when I do show it because I didn't want to explain all this in that video. So that's it guys. Thanks for watching and always remember, Trend on Trend!